Now after the Sabbath, as it began to dawn on the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary came to see the tomb. Behold, there was a great earthquake, for an angel of the Lord descended from the sky and came and rolled away the stone from the door and sat on it. His appearance was like lightning and his clothing white as snow. For fear of him, the guards shook and became like dead men. The angel answered the women, Don't be afraid, for I know that you seek Jesus who, was, who has been crucified. He is not here, for he has risen, just like he said. Come, see the place where the Lord was lying. Go quickly and tell his disciples. He has risen from the dead, and behold, he goes before you. He goes ahead of you into Galilee. There you will see him. Behold, I have told you. Just to pause here for a second. Yeshua, Jesus, was crucified on Friday. I know there's a lot of people who have different opinions of exactly what day it was, but as far as I see in the scriptures, it was Friday. He rested on Shabbat. He rested on the Sabbath in death. Okay? And he rose on the first day. That will be Sunday. Let's continue. Verse 8, they departed quickly from the tomb with fear and great joy and ran to bring his disciples word. As they, as they went to tell his disciples, behold, Jesus met them, saying, Rejoice! They came and took hold of his feet and worshipped him. Then Yeshua said to them, Don't be afraid. Go tell my brothers that they should go into Galilee. And there they will see me. Now while they were going, behold, some of the guards came into the city and told the chief priests all the things that had happened. When they were assembled all the, uh, with the elders and had taken counsel, they gave a large amount of silver to the soldiers, money, saying, Say that his disciples came by night and stole him away while he slept. If this comes to the governor's ears, we will persuade him and, and make you free of worry. So they took money and did as they were told. This saying was spread abroad among the Jews and continues until today. Again, I want to stop here for a second. Notice how serious it was. They could have lost their lives. Okay, These people, the, the guards... And the people that were appointed to look after and to watch over the tomb. I guarantee you, when the governor said, you know, stand guard at the tomb and seal it, I guarantee you it was, it was secured and secured and it was security upon security upon security upon security because their lives were at stake. When Jesus rose from the dead, that's why they were like, oh, okay, we'll have to pay a large sum of pay, like hush money here, just to make, so they're not going to worry that they're going to get killed because of this. Rest assured, when the governor gave command to stand guard, to watch the tomb and to seal it. You know, the, there was, again, there's many different levels of security they used. They used, first of all, a heavy stone in front of the door, in front of the entrance, plus a seal on that stone, plus guards watching the, uh, the tomb. Okay? And so uh, it would have been guarded heavily, Consi all things considered. Verse 16, But the eleven disciples went into Galilee, to the mountain where Yeshua had sent them. 
When they saw him, they bowed down to him, but some doubted. Jesus came to them and spoke to them, saying, All authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Go, the TR and the NU add therefore, the Texas Receptus and the, the NU manuscripts, Add therefore, so go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things that I command you. Behold, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. Amen. I want to say this in closing in. Jesus said, Behold, I'm with you always, even to the end of the age. And this is a favorite passage. And, and a lot of people use this to comfort themselves. That the Lord's always with them. Again, this is a generic statement here. Okay. There are times when, individually speaking, I'm talking about individually. There are times when the Lord can leave you. Okay. Um, I mean, you think about after this, in the book of Revelation, chapter 3, Jesus said to, to the church, okay, not, not, not the world here, this is his people, or at least supposedly supposed to be his people. He said, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears me, you know, come and open the door and, I will, and then I will come in. He was on the outside, people. He was on the outside. He wasn't with them. He wasn't literally among them. He was out. He was he was outside. So sometimes individually and sometimes in a group setting, it is possible that the Lord isn't literally present with you. I'll tell you a story of a of a of a dear lady that I know about who um, she was a, a new believer and she wasn't conditioned with all these nice little flowery verses like a lot of Christians like to use, like this here, Behold, I'm with you always. A lot, a lot of people like to say that God's always with you all the time and never leaves you. And so uh, she enjoyed the presence of God. She, like, she really uh, felt and believed that the Lord's presence was with, was with her for, you know, for a great amount of time, for a great extended period of time. And then one day she sensed that the Lord's presence was not with her. Now, instead of doing what some Christians might do, instead of saying, oh no, the Lord is with me, it is written, I'm with you always. Or quoting one Psalm 139, which really isn't for everybody. It's for, this is, Psalm 139 is written by the anointed of God, David the anointed. It's not really for every Joe Blow on the street. I mean, even Moses understood this because he said, God, don't send us anywhere without your presence. So yes, um, this lady that I know of. She says that the Lord wasn't with her this, you know, for a certain period of time. And, and that caused her to seek him all the, all the more. That caused her to seek the Lord all the more. Pressing into him, searching for him, seeking his presence. And all of a sudden, the Lord broke through in her life. And she was healed, she said. Okay? Now, if she was like how a lot of Christians are just very presumptuous and just say, oh, the Lord's with me, whether I feel it or not. The Lord's with me, the Lord's with me, the Lord's with me. Well, maybe he is, but maybe he's not. So if she did that, she would have never experienced a breakthrough that she experienced. She would have never have experienced that going, you know, be, you know, more or less going to another level spiritually. She would never experienced the healing that she experienced. So you always got to take things in context and also look at it as not everything is very specific to every individual, but rather it's a generic statement by the Lord.
Another thing I should say is baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. A lot of people don't understand what it means to be baptized in the name of somebody or what the phrase in the name of actually means. It means by the authority of and by the command of, in behalf of, okay? So if you're baptized in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, you it, it, it just means that somebody has, you know, received the Word of God uh, by, the, by faith in the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, they obeyed and baptized. They don't need to say in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit in order to baptize in the name of the Father, and Holy Spirit. You understand? You don't need to say that at all. It's not about reciting liturgy. It's not about reciting English words. You know, they didn't speak English back then. In that setting, it's about what you do and your motive behind it it's about what you do, why you do it, who you are, you know, what doctrine you are going by, what teachings you are going by, what, what authority are you going by. That's what in the name of means. So this concludes the reading of the entire book of Matthew. I pray that it was a great blessing to you. And as always, may God bless you with enlightenment so that you would understand the scriptures know it more and really really seek the scriptures more read the scriptures more always meditate upon the lord and he will bless you thanks for watching